Fun Facts presents the 1954 Dodge Fire Arrow 4 concept car. It is a 50s classic car. It was introduced in 1954. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. So let's get started now. Okay, the Chrysler Corporation built some of the most compelling and influential concept cars of the immediate post-World War era. With many under the auspicious of styling boss Virgil Exner, among the list were four successive Dodge Fire Arrows wearing handcrafted coachwork by Caro Zeria Ghia of Turin, Italy. Manufacturers resumed automobile production following World War II using pre-war designs with mild styling updates. By the late 1940s and early 50s, new designs were emerging with modern styling and many inspired World War aircraft designs and an ongoing space race. Designers began building concepts and idea cars in greater numbers as a method of testing new ideas, ideas feasibility, engaging public interest. The, daisy, the dazzling concepts penned by Exner were among the most dramatic, elegant, and daring, influencing his forward look designs that emerged in the mid-1950s. Chrysler had built the automotive industry's first wind tunnel and would create some truly advanced streamlined bodies during the 1930s, including the Newport Parade Phantom and the Thunderbolt. Though the science of aerodynamics was sound, the timing of the introduction of the cars was not. The country was still gripped by the depression. Buyers would not go for the futuristic, but the practical. World War II's use of aerodynamics and aviation accelerated the appeal, but the automotive industry remained staunchly conservative. Chrysler had struck up an alliance with Fiat at the end of the war, and C.B. Thomas <coughs> would utilize the relationship to design some truly remarkable concepts. Thomas had spoken with Pen Pennon Farina and it was concluded that Farina and Ghia would be employed to build a custom 1950 Plymouth. Mario Boano at Ghia believed it could be made better. Therefore, Ghia would be hired to build some classic concepts for Chrysler. Desperate to change its image, Chrysler retained the services of designer Virgil Exner to define, to define a completely new and modern design directly for the company. Among the concepts that followed were the SS, the opulent Chrysler D Elegance, and the Adventurer. Although intriguing designs, these concepts <clears throat> would remain mostly one-off historical pieces. When it became time for Exner's vision of the fire arrow to emerge from the drawing board and become reality, he looked across the Atlantic towards traditional carrosseries such as Ghia, who retained the knowledge and skill needed to build the unique designs in hand-formed sheet metal. The coach building craft had faded in America and as an extra incentive, the US dollar went very far in an Italy recovering from war. Four air, fire arrow concepts were built with the first introduced in 1953 riding atop a 1954 Dodge chassis. It was rolling concept display, model devoid of running gear. The positive response it received from the public prompted approval to design and build an actual running prototype. 
the Fire Arrow 2 concept retained the mock-ups, two-place seating, frameless windshield, unbroken side flanks, and well-defined rear haunches. It was a low and sleek two-seat roadster with subtle fins and rested on a 119-inch Dodge chassis. Power was from a 241 cubic inch red Ram Hemi V8 delivering 150 horsepower backed by a gyro torque four-speed automatic transmission. It had quad exhaust pipes integrated into the rear fenders, quad headlamps, round taillights, chromed wire wheels, trim that stopped at the sides rather than wrapping around the front and rear fascias as seen on the original Fire Arrow, and a new tooth grill treatment. Its exterior wore a light yellow paint scheme. The Fire Arrow 2 had many design cues that hinted at its Italian origins, yet embodied Exner's original design principles for a clean, horizontally driven design with a tasteful amount of chrome trim and ornamentation. The Dodge Fire Arrow 3 used the Dodge Royal Production car platform with stock running gear, a fully automatic torque fit transmission, and a red Ram Hemi V8 engine. It had plush leather and adjustable seats with opal blue bolsters and white leather inserts. It had a push button radio and a fully functional heater defroster. A large ashtray was positioned between the two front seats. The Chrysler Corporation used the Fire Arrow 3 at the opening of the company's new Chelsea Proving Grounds in June of 1954, where it was driven by Betty Skelton on a brand new banked oval setting a new world record, a woman on a closed course at 143 miles per hour. She did this in a dress and wearing high heels. After the test runs, the car was put on the show circuit and eventually became the basis for the Fire Arrow 4. The Fire Arrow 4 had exterior doors, excuse me, the Fire Arrow 4 had exterior door handles and a folding convertible top, which were later utilized by Chrysler's various brands. The third and fourth Fire Arrows were a coupe and a four-seat production ready convertible prototype. None of the four concepts came to production, although the last of Exner's Fire Arrow series attracted the attention of wealthy car enthusiast Eugene Casserole, who purchased the production rights to design and team with engineer Paul Fargo to create a practical road car, and the result was the hugely successful and exotic dual Ghia built between 1956 and 1958. I've been reading from an article that I find fascinating from conceptcars.com. I'll be putting the link below the video if you'd like to reread it or look at any of the uh, information that I may have missed. I don't think I did. But again, thank you. Um, if you found yourself this far into the video and you like the video, please give us a thumbs up because it really does help our channel and if you like our channel please subscribe because we'll be doing all of the concept cars from the 50s and 60s we'll be doing all of the sports cars and the, uh, all the automobiles from the 50s and 60s the muscle cars of course we'll be doing hybrid cars and supercars we'll be doing autoramas and car shows we'll be doing hot rods we'll be doing a little bit of everything for everybody and we hope to see you when we upload our next video. And thank you for taking the time out of your day. And always, always, always take good care.